Question 28. A person stands 30 feet from point B, 30 feet, and watch the uh, balloon rise vertically, go this way, from the point, as shown in the figure above. Uh, the balloon uh, is rising at a constant rate, mark down this rate, the rate means some, some kind of uh, velocity, yeah, two feet per second. What is the rate of change in radians per second of the angle theta? Because the balloon goes up this way, goes up this way, and when you observe in here, the angle, this angle change. As you, see, you want to find the rate of change of this angle when the balloon is at a height 40. Okay. So let's do that. Will be easy. Related rate. Related rate. Uh, so first, we will determine uh, the trig ratio of angle theta. That's first. You're going to start with oh, okay. We have the height described, and we have this distance, 30, uh, would be opposite and adjacent. That's connected with the tangent. So tangent of theta equals opposite, opposite, which is, let's say, the height, h, over hypotenuse is uh, uh, over uh, adjacent, which is known, 30. Opposite over adjacent, h over 30. This is uh, initial uh, information that we needed. Then once we need to find the related rates, a kind of rate, change of the height, change of the angle, we have to start right away to find the, uh, the derivative. So the derivative of tangent is second square of theta. Implicitly, so you have to go inside and find d theta with respect to time. Of course, all of that respect to the time. Equals uh, 1 over 30 times h. Take 130 out, and the derivative of h is dh with respect to the time okay that's good progress now we need to collect more information yeah because it might help because we need to find second here so we need to find h here okay so since h equals 40 they give it to us it's equals 40 So, and we could find here the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. 30 squared plus 40 squared is 900 plus 1600 is 2500. Square root of it will be 50. So, the hypotenuse will be 50. That helped to find second. If you don't remember second, it's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is 30 over 50. So second will be 50 over 30. So second theta equals 30 over 50. Uh, 50 over 30, your reciprocal, or 5 over 3. That's the value of second. Now we have information. You plug it in all. What's missing here? We miss nothing but the change of angle. This is our target. We need to find the rate of the change of angle d theta over dt here this is our target so let's plug it in all here second squared will be 5 5 over 3 squared times d theta with respect to the time equals 1 over 30 and the change of the height the change of the height 
uh, is uh, is given by two balloon is rising at a constant rate of two so dh over dh with respect to t is two so cancel out two is two is one over 15 and this is d theta and this is 25 over 9 5 square over 3 9 uh, 3 square we solve it for d theta with respect to the time reciprocal 9 over 25 send it to 1 over 15 so 1 over 15 times 25 over 9 then we'll finish it at divided by 5 is 3 divided by 5 is 5 it's going to be 5 This one over 15. Yeah. Yeah. Divided by 5 and 3. This is 9 over 25. We got some 9 reciprocal 25 over 9 here. Thanks. I heard you fixed my mistake. So we multiply times reciprocal to be a 9 over 25. So you divide by 3 is 5 and divide by 3 is 3 then it will be 3 times 1 is 3 over 25 times 5 is 125 so the change of angle rate will be 3 over 125 that's question 28 question 29 they tell us how many vertical asymptotes does the graph y equals x minus 2 over 4, uh, x to the fourth minus 16? If we factor the bottom here, x to the fourth will be x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4. And also we could factor it to be x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x squared plus 4. Now we could cancel out x minus 2 with x minus 2. And as you see, if we equal that, if we equal denominator to 0, this is not applicable to be a 0 at all. Any number is squared and add 4, it will give us positive number, no negative number at all. But this one, it gives us negative 2, the asymptote here, x equals negative 2. So only we have one asymptote here. Now we have the last question. Riemann sum. For what value, for what value uh, of b does the integral uh, from 1 to b x squared uh, dx equal limit of the sum from k to 1 uh, to k uh, from uh, from k equals 1 to n when n is infinity close to infinity of 1 plus 2 k over n squared times 2 n times 2 over n so let's go step by step with that here we know that the sum from k equals 1 to n of the function of 1 plus k delta x. That's the sum of the function of 1 plus k delta x so if you, if we compare this statement with that statement we're going to find that f of x equals x square we know that f of x equals x square here and delta x will be 2 over n delta x will be 2 over n here delta x equals 2 over n so if we 
plug it in 2 over n, uh, delta x for 2 over n will be uh, 1 plus 1 plus, and instead of 2, n, 2 over n, I replaced delta x and k left, delta x k. So it will be 1 plus delta x k. And you could replace n for k because k is from 1 to n. K is from 1 to n. You could replace n for it. And you say, so replace n for it. 1 plus delta x n. That equals 1 plus 2. That's 2. Delta x n is 2. Then it's a 3. So the integration of x squared delta x will be from 1 to 3, b a 3, the answer is b.